A constellation of Starlink satellites beam internet across the globe. But there is more to this story than global connectivity. Scientists fear that what's floating above could harm what's below. Because with a lifespan of five years, Starlink satellites eventually burn up and return to Earth, releasing harmful aluminum oxide particles. And these invisible specks could trigger chemical reactions that harm the ozone layer. With more than 7,000 Starlink satellites in orbit, the balance between innovation and environmental impact is lost in space. Our next report uncovers the hidden cost of Starlink Internet. Elon Musk's Starlink satellites promised internet for everyone. But are they silently damaging the planet? In January 2025, 120 Starlink satellites burnt up in space. The skies shimmered with stunning artificial meteor showers. Now, one could take it to be a cosmic show, right? But maybe not. Because behind the beauty lies an invisible danger. Each re-entry releases aluminium oxide particles. These tiny particles could harm the ozone layer. The ozone protects life on Earth from harmful UV rays. Starlink satellites orbit between 550 to 1,200 kilometers high. Their lifespan is short, which is around 5 years. And Starlink's re-entry speed hits around 27,000 kilometers per hour. This friction creates intense heat. The heat then vaporizes the satellites completely, and aluminium turns into aluminium oxide particles. One Starlink satellite leaves behind 30 kilograms of these particles, and they float in the atmosphere for decades. Now, even though the danger isn't immediate, it's not like it won't happen. In 2023, NASA detected metal particles in Alaska skies. Aluminium oxide levels increased eight-fold between 2016 and 2022. And in 2022 alone, satellites released 41.7 metric tons of aluminium, which is 30% more than the natural cosmic dust. If launches continue, emissions could hit 360 metric tons annually. That's 646% higher than natural levels. And the worst part? The damage won't appear for decades. And by then, the atmosphere could be packed with particles. At 10%, the current fraction of stratospheric aerosol with metal cores is not large. But over 5,000 satellites have been launched in the past five years. Most of them will come back in the next five, and we need to know how that might further affect stratospheric aerosols. Now, even though solutions exist, none are perfect. Satellites could use safer materials or move to graveyard orbits. But that takes more fuel and money. The European Space Agency's Zero Debris Initiative hopes to fix this by the year 2030. And even though Elon Musk's SpaceX is talking, they are taking no action yet. They're pushing the envelope in, in multiple ways, not just with the spacewalk. They're also going to a much higher altitude with a more severe radiation environment than we've been to since Apollo. And um, so there's a question of exactly how the electronics are going to uh, withstand and perform in that environment. So that's a bit of that's that's an additional risk that you don't face when you when you just stay in low Earth orbit and go up to the ISS. Um, but yeah, the, the EVA is definitely the the spacewalk is definitely the the, the riskiest of, of all the things that they're doing. Instead, the billionaire is on a shopping spree. SpaceX is planning to invest at least $1.8 billion to build new Starship launch pads and processing facilities on Florida's space coast. The head of one of Europe's largest satellite manufacturers, the France-based Thales, has highlighted the risks to governments of relying too heavily on private satellite constellations in an apparent warning. And without naming Starlink, the Thales CEO even went on to describe the risks of relying on outside services for government links. Government actors need reliability, visibility, and stability. When you operate government communications, you don't necessarily want to be dependent on an external person, whoever that is. That is why the vast majority of government infrastructure in Europe is owned or has been purchased. Now, without a doubt, Musk's Starlink satellites are changing the world. But could they also be breaking it? 
As of February 27th, there are more than 7,000 Starlink satellites in orbit. And with a lifespan of just five years, these thousands of satellites are bound to re-enter Earth's atmosphere and burn on the way down. The night sky may glow brighter, but the unseen price might be too high. Is this the dawn of a connected world, or the beginning of space enthusiast Musk's fading legacy? Hi. How are you? Very well, thank you. Thank you for being here. Namaste, Mr. President. Bharat ke logon ko meri namaste. How many people generally follow you in interviews? Typically in a month, we have uh, viewers uh, up to 150 million. That's more than twice the population of France. And in the last two years, we had three billion viewers. So I say, Lohan, this is your chance to be famous. You're on first post. <laughs> One word to describe your equation with Prime Minister Modi. Amity. As India and France work together, are you creating a new era of non-alignment in the technology space? India is a training superpower. One million engineers a year, more than all of Europe and the US combined. So we have that partnership. We have a partnership on the environment and the economy. We also have civilian nuclear programs and that is something we've developed far beyond the France-India relationship. So we want to work together on AI. And then comes China with its deep sea, creating models at a fraction of the cost. Did that innovation take you by surprise? Did that breakthrough make you sit up and think, what, what did the Chinese do and how? But what did DeepSeek do? They took everything that was already available from the last AI model and then uh, they recalibrated it. So are you going to ban Chinese AI in France? So we don't have this American approach of banning tech because of where it comes from. 